Dr. Elke Albrecht is familiar with Finnish opera. She has been researching it since 2004. I got interested in those Kalevala operas because I have made this, uh, this database for myself about all these Finnish operas and I found this big group of, of uh, operas that are related to the Kalevala. There are quite a few uh, Kalevala operas and many do not know how, how many there are. There was one case, um, somebody else who already then knew it asked somebody, somebody else like, what do you think, how many Kalevala operas there are? And this person said, Koksi. And, and then the one who asked continued, like, Kymmentä yksi. So it, it's not only two, but there are over 20. One of the Kalevala operas is Di Kalevainen in Pohjola. Kalevainen is going to be performed after 127 years for the first time. Di Kalevainen in Pohjola is, in the end, the, the story about the sample and, and also about Ilmarinen. Um, and Väinämöinen and, and Lemminkäinen going to Pohjola. And, um, and in the end, Ilmarinen gets the Pohjolan tyttö. In this case, her name is Ismo, which is a bit strange for Finns, I guess, but that's what the Germans choose in the end. This is the first, the really first opera that just takes Kalevala seriously. I guess Paasius and Tobelius took the Kalevala seriously, but they wanted to educate people as well. So they took in some Greek heroes and put half of the, of the story to Greece and then the Lemminkainen is coming back to Finland and it, you know, it's all a bit weird. Composer of the opera is German, K. Müller-Berghaus. Müller-Berghaus worked as a chief conductor of Turun Soitanollinen Seura at the late 1800s. Well, Karl Müller-Berghaus uh, came here in uh, 1886. And it was so that the, the post for the chief conductor was opened. And there must have been an advertisement in some German paper, because there have been a lot of, of applications from, from uh, German conductors. And for some reason, he was chosen, and so he lived here till uh, 1895. When Müller Berghaus uh, came to Turku, that was just a time when also abroad in Germany, Wagner was very popular. And I guess um, he had friends here, uh, the Elfing f family. Uh, Betty Elfing was an author and her, her father was um, a doctor. And he was in touch with Elias Lundrud. And I think via them he got to, got to know the Kalevala and got more in touch with the whole culture of, of Kalevala and Finnish culture. And, you know, that was just a time when, when the Kalevala was, was very strong, you know, if you think about uh, Gale in Kalela or Sibelius. The opera of Müller House was never performed in his day. One problem, actually, of this of the performance of this opera was that there was no, no place that would have worked. So such a theater with, um, with the, the orchestra that he uh, expected or that he wrote for was very big. And there were also also big choir and you needed really good singers. Uh, opera in Finland in the 1890s um, well, was probably not the, the most common thing. So there was Pasius, but Pasius' first opera is Kung Karl's Jagd, and this was by a German composer written with, on a Swedish libretto. Müller Berghaus' opera is just before um, before Oscar Medicantos Pochjaneti. So maybe this is also one could think one reason why it was not performed because at that time uh, Finland was about you know to come closer to independence. And, and it was important to strengthen the, the, the Finnish sides of, of culture. The problem also with nationalism is today maybe again a different one than 127 years ago. I mean, being German, you have to be careful, like getting too strong on that topic. But I think, uh, still, I think that a certain proud of being 
be it German or Finnish or whatever, is quite healthy. I think, well, this, this might actually be a good, good work to take abroad, especially to German-speaking countries, because it, it tells something about Finnish culture, the Kalevala, in German. And basically there is no such thing. But what is the message of the 127 years old opera for the viewer of today? Well, I think the, the message of this opera should have been sent in 1890. So maybe we are a bit late with that. But I think back then the message might have been that um, Finnish culture is worth to be taken serious. And it's worth to, to be a subject of an opera.